हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू दी टेक टॉक्स एट इक्वेशन माय नेम इज निरंजन माय नेम इज अक्षत टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट व्हाट इज मशीन लर्निंग एंड वी आर गोइंग टू लुक इनटू सम वेरी बेसिक क्वेश्चंस दैट एवरीवन लुक्स एट व्हेनेवर दे आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट लर्निंग मशीन व्हाई एंड व्हेन डू वी नीड इट या सो सो इट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट यू डोंट नीड मशीन लर्निंग फॉर ऑल काइंड्स ऑफ प्रॉब्लम्स So many people come to me and they say that okay, this is the problem that I need to solve, and I want to use machine learning to solve it. But they don't have the basic understanding about why is it necessary to use machine learning in that. So, so my basic idea about that is that if you can basically have certain level of conditions like if else and stuff like that, and you can have like some nested loops and conditions to to basically solve a problem, then you don't need machine learning. when it reaches a point where it is beyond your imagination or where where you cannot comprehend the complexity of a program and the number of factors affecting the output of a program exceed a certain uh, limit so where you, you mean that whenever the necessity arises then only you want to exactly use exactly that, that is what my point is that whenever it is absolutely necessary to use machine learning only then it should be used just for the sake of using machine learning or mentioning uh, the the sort of uh, like tag that okay this program uses machine learning you should not use machine learning. i think this is really an eye opener for most of the viewers yeah. uh i want to ask another question that uh, do you need to know uh, high level fundas or high level computational mathematical algorithms to start learning machine learning so 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 now machine learning is so there are two aspects to machine learning one is the research aspect if you want to really go into algorithm development if you want to make your new algorithms and uh, to to solve a problem then you need high level mathematics uh, to do it but if you are at the usage end you want to use machine learning to basically solve a particular problem that you are having then just a basic idea of mathematics like matrix and matrix transformations and uh, geometry and geometry and uh, some idea about uh, programming I programming guess. and uh, like greater than intermediate level of programming mm-hmm. in at least one language preferably python or or probably java is is more than enough uh, to go by python or java worldwide because python is a very uh, like popular language uh, if you like go to forums uh, you will see a lot of questions being asked over there a lot of libraries, libraries are libraries. now available in python and a lot of big corporations like google and microsoft are now uh, like supporting python a lot for their research purposes so that is why it is sort of a trickle down effect and uh, that is why i would say if you have greater than intermediate knowledge of python it is more than enough uh, for you to basically start uh, so basically anyone can have with a basic understanding of programming and uh, normal mathematics like geometry uh, can start learning machine learning. absolutely okay so i want to know what is your approach to machine learning in this course so my approach in this course has been a bit different uh, rather than following the complex algorithms of machine learning first what i have done is started coding the basic fundas and uh, let the users compare their results with the results of the complex ones say for example i have asked the students to build the classifier very really basic classifier on their own and test their ac- accuracy and compare the accuracy of their simple classifier with those of k nearest neighbor right second approach Uh, that is very interesting is that we have used a lot of plots and graphs uh, wherever we are uh, running any program right because you can visualize the output of the program and the output or the type of data that you have fed in and you can understand the underlying implementation of the algorithm in a great detail so now i want to know like how does it really happen like how does machine learning algorithms work basically I think that's a really good question, and it will be an eye opener for our viewers to understand how machine learning works. Uh, imagine that you want to solve a problem that requires some decision making, right? So whenever a decision be being made, right, what happens is that uh, uh, there are some rules that need to be looked at. If the rule satisfies, verifies, so you take a decision accordingly. So. but if there are a lot of manual tools that will be required to solve a problem then it becomes very hectic and it becomes almost that you cannot solve that problem 
Imagine you can build up an algorithm that can figure out all the rules for you by looking at the patterns from data. If you are able to build this kind of algorithm, right, so you can put that algorithm to test to all other similar problem statements, right? So isn't, isn't it a magical thing to do, right? Because you write solutions for one thing and you are solving, uh, you are applying that thing to all other kinds of problems. Say for example, you have written an algorithm for solving the problem of image classification, right? And if that algorithm works and the accuracy is good, then you can use that similar algorithm to solve the problem of recognizing handwritten digits or say for example finding or predicting the trajectory of a, like an, an object, right? So that's how uh, machine learning actually works. So. so now I want to know like suppose if I am going to start writing machine learning and I'm at the first line of code, what are the resources that I should be looking at? I think that's a really good question. Uh, to start machine learning, you can look at two resources, right? Uh, first one would be scikit-learn and second one would be TensorFlow. With scikit, you can have access to various data set samples that you can import in your program and can train your algorithm based on that. Plus, scikit has lots of other uh, feature support that can be used. Uh, then second is TensorFlow. TensorFlow is such an awesome resource and if you go to the website of TensorFlow and access Playground, right, you can build uh, samples or you can build models of neural networks and other complex algorithms which solve very complex problems. So, and they are very easy to use. You can just set up a model with the, I, I guess, with three or four clicks of a button. So, I think they are the two resources that users can target, I, I guess. Uh, so we hope uh, this talk was useful to you. We look forward towards your active participation in the course. Thank you.